Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Well, let's continue talking about theory of relativity, and today we will start a new chapter, which is called Minkowski view. Before I presented the Galilean view on theory of relativity, well, on physics, basically, on the world, on the universe, then Einstein view, and this is Minkowski view. Now, Minkowski view basically is just a continuation of Einstein. Einstein's view was drastically different from Galilean view. Minkowski is basically the same as Einstein, just view it from slightly different angle, more geometrical, if, if you prefer. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Relativity for All, presented on Unisor.com. This is a completely uh, free website, no advertisement, even sign-in is not necessary. There are two uh, prerequisite courses, Math for Teens and Physics for Teens, which are prerequisite, as I said, for this course. Relativity is more advanced, so you have to know basically everything, whatever is in math and physics. Uh, and that includes, in math, for example, obviously, calculus, vector algebra, etc. And uh, physics is, um, well, it's very, uh, physics course contains some very important uh, topics about electromagnetic field, uh, Maxwell equations, etc. Okay, now, the uh, mm, chapters before this, like uh, especially the Einstein's view um, chapter, contains lots of information which, which we consider is to be known already. These are part of the same course, which are obviously as well prerequisite to this lecture. Okay. So, now let's talk about um, uh, Minkowski's space-time. Now, um, let me start from some, something very simple. If you have a plane and you have a point moving in a circle, can you tell that this particular picture represents the motion? No, it represents only trajectory because along this trajectory we can move either uniformly with the same angular speed or uh, with a different speed or even in different direction and the trajectory would be the same a circle how can I represent a motion much more completely in a graphical form well, here is how let's say I have x and y axis on the plane, I will introduce a new time axis and for every moment in time I will put point in a three-dimensional now space retaining x and y as they were here. So let's say at time zero I was here, so this is the point. Let's say at point time is equal to one, I was here. So I have to move from this point to this. And then basically if you will continue, if it's a regular movement, circular movement, you will see the helix um, as full representation of this movement. If I am moving in this direction one circle, one circle, which is this, and then I start moving to another direction, my uh, helix would be in a different shape. But in any case, Whatever my movement is, the curve, in this case helix or anything like that, would be different and it will completely represent my motion. So this is something which has been known even before Minkowski, obviously, that this adding the, the third dimension uh, after x and y, adding the time, would be beneficial to graphically represent the motion. Now, Here's a little problem. Our world is three-dimensional, like x, y, and z. If I will add the time, it will be four-dimensional, and I cannot visualize it. So that's why people in their examples, in their lectures, in, in their textbooks, etc., they were drawing only two-dimensional movement plus third-dimensional time, because it can be represented and viewed. But in formulas, they were using all three-dimensional x, y, and z, and the time t. So that's what we will do as well. So for visualization, we will use just the plane movement, 
but is, as far as the formula would be concerned, the formula of the distance, um, I will use all three-dimensional, and that's kind of understood why. Let's just do a couple of examples of this thing. So let's say my point is at rest. This is my x, y, and my point is somewhere here. x, 0, y, 0. How, in a three-dimensional space plus time, the, 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 the graph of the motion in this case, well, motion in quotes, obviously, because it's at rest, how it will look? Well, at any given time, the point is exactly at the same place, so x and y coordinates will retain, and time will grow, so it will be a straight line parallel to um, my t-axis, which projects onto the point. So the uh, x of t would always be x0, y of t would be always y0, and t would be uh, basically t, doesn't matter. I can probably use a different letter here. I will use, for example, tau, tau, t of tau is equal to tau. So that basically kind of gives me coordinates based on some parameter tau. Whatever the parameter is. It can be from minus infinity to plus infinity. Minus would be corresponding to past and plus would correspond to future and tau is equal to zero is current moment. Okay, that's nature. Alright, now what if situation is slightly different? Let's say starting from this point x0, y0, I go along some straight line in uh, a uniform movement. So constant speed, constant direction, constant velocity. That's how it was before. Here I am at point t equal to zero. <coughs> how this particular be represented in the space plus time? Well, let's start with x and y coordinates. Since I'm moving along a straight line with a constant speed, this would be something like this. And this would be something like this. Right? So I'm adding a speed component, speed along the x, speed along the um, y, and that's how my movement is done. At t equals to zero, I'm here. At negative t, I will be here. At positive t, I will be here. Now, how will it look with it addition of the third dimension? Well, very simply. It will just grow. This projection, obviously, onto my real trajectory. So this is a graph in a three-dimensional space plus time. But obviously, it's a straight line, because this is uh, the uh, equations which define straight line in, in 3D. And uh, obviously, the projection will be always into, into x and y. Okay. So next, what if I'm moving? Let's do it simpler. I'm moving along x-axis toward only, but with acceleration a from zero. So at tau is equal to zero, I am at point zero. So that would be. y will always be 0 because I'm moving along x-axis and x would be equal to uh, a t squared divided by 2. So that's the from Newtonian mechanics well actually kinematics um, how my distance along the x-axis would be if I'm moving with acceleration. <coughs> Alright, so what is this? I should say tau, I'm sorry. Tau. So how this would look on, on the graph? Well, 
x is a parabola t is the same as tau, so x would be a parabola so in the plane xg plane I will have a parabola and that's the representation now if I have only this parabola with whatever the parameters the parabola has I can have these equations obviously which means I'm moving with constant acceleration so I'm deriving just trajectory by itself doesn't really tell me much about how I move with acceleration, without e acceleration, etc. back and forth but with this parabola I know exactly how I move I'm moving with constant acceleration so this is an example okay, I just wanted you to be comfortable with in this case, three-dimensional but again, as far as the formulas will be concerned four-dimensional space plus time used by Minkowski to interpret theory of relativity by Einstein so Einstein's view are kind of transformed into more visual representation that's what basically the where Minkowski started his work okay now being as it may let's talk about something else so we know that representation of the movement in the space-time space plus time sometimes people are even uh, omit space or, or minus or plus in between or dash they put space-time as one word <coughs> so we basically kind of comfortable with what it represents now what's the most important well uh, most important not most but very important <laughs> but very important property of any space we live in three-dimensional our XYZ space or four-dimensional space plus time um, what is very very important characteristic two points must have a distance between them that's obvious well in Galilean approach where we're not considering the time time is absolute we have only our three-dimensional world and we have a Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z then the distance square root distance between two points would be equal to difference of x coordinates plus difference means between y coordinates square plus z square well a minus b or b minus it doesn't matter because it's a square so this is the square of a distance in Cartesian coordinates in Galilean mechanics and what's important this distance is retained if I am moving from one inertial system to another with Galilean transformation of coordinates when the time actually is absolute now we did actually prove it when we were ex explaining the Galilean um, viewpoint now here comes Einstein and he says hey Galilean transformation of coordinates from one inertial system to another is not exactly what it is we need Lorentz transformation Lorentz transformation which involves time and it involves the time uh, di 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 dilation and it involves certain modifications of the lengths whenever the um, uh, object is moving, whenever reference frame is moving so we need Lorentz transformation actually of coordinates and that's how in reality it is and as an approximation only the um, Galilean distance between two uh, points is valid so how can I define the distance between two points not like this obviously so it will be invariant relative to Lorentz transformation because I would like the difference between two points to be the same if measured in one inertial system or measured in another inertial system which is moving relative to the first one we know that length is sometimes getting shorter, longer, etc. I mean that's along the our uh, uh, real representation of the length but we need something which is called a distance which we can 
kind of use as an invariant from one system to another. So it's not our distance in meters, basically, but it's a some quadratic form in this particular case, which retains its value when moved from one inertial system to another. And in a previous lecture about metrics, uh, in, in the Einstein view, the last lecture is about metrics, we have come up with this formula, uh, C, uh, T, B minus T, square, square, T square, minus X, B minus X, A, square minus Y, B minus minus square minus Z, B minus Z, A, square. We have come up with this formula, this expression, to be invariant relative to Lorentz transformation. So if we represent if we represent the our universe as a four-dimensional, which is three-dimensional space plus one-dimensional time, and use Lorentz transformation of coordinates from one to another, and Lorentz transformation transforms all four coordinates, including time then this particular expression was proven to be invariant relative to Lorentz transformation, which, is, which means it's, it this distance, so to speak distance, is retained the value from one inertial system to, to another. Now, obviously, if this is invariant, then any function of this also is invariant. If I will multiply it by 5, it will also be invariant. So sometimes people using this, sometimes people using its negative, which is plus, 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 plus here and minus here. Doesn't really matter. In certain cases it's one, certain cases another. What matters is that there is a concept of distance in four-dimensional Minkowski space. Now, again, for visualization, we are using only three-dimensional to space x, y plus time t. But in any case, now what's also very important, by the way, I have to put squares here. C also is squared. My fault, sorry. So um, what's also important is that it's more beneficial if, let's consider again, two-dimensional space plus one-dimensional time. So on the time, it's better to uh, measure it not in time units, like in seconds, but in c times g, uh, which is basically meters or centimeters or whatever, where c is the speed of light. Um, speed times time would be, again, unit of length. Why is it the same, basically? Just to make the same measurement units on every uh, axis meters, meters, and meters, right? And since C is constant in any inertial um, reference frame, it doesn't really change the character of the, of the curve or whatever we are drawing in this space. Uh, it just stretches it a little bit during, you know, in one particular direction or another. So that's basically all I wanted to talk about this is how the Minkowski view on the theory, uh, theory of relativity begins. So it begins with creating a four-dimensional space-time uh, with three-dimensional space and long time. It uh, also involves measuring time not as just seconds, but time is measured in terms of lengths, uh, like light second, if you wish where light, AC is the speed of light, so uh, multiply. It's just a measurement unit, doesn't really matter to unify all the units to the same basic standard. And this expression as being an uh, invariant length, invariant definition of the distance between points A and B. And points A and B are considered to be four-dimensional. We have X, Y, Z, and T coordinates. 
and obviously we have a Lorentz transformation from one coordinate system to another which is moving uniformly relative to the first one so um, so that would be the definition of the distance and it's invariant that's important okay that's it I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture you go to unisor.com you um, uh, choose the relativity for for all and um, that would be the Minkowski views menu first lecture in there okay thanks very much and good luck <laughs>